The warehouse has been robbed. Watchman, he's dead. Still alive. We better get him to the hospital quick. I have your report of last night, Davis. Tough about that watchman movement. The guns and ammunition that were stolen mean more crime. Well, whoever is robbing our government warehouses must be shipping the stuff across the border somehow. It isn't so much the border that I'm worrying about, but some of those guns will fall into the hands of gangsters right here at home. Oh, if we could only find some way to get the guns away from the gangsters who already have them, there'd be no more crime. Every one of them is yellow. Where have you been, Crenshaw? At the hospital. A gangster's still alive, but unconscious. I left Hopkins down there in case he talks. Yeah. Got all this junk in his pocket. <laughs> Chateau Madrid. Hangs around with nice people anyway. Headquarters is sending some men to help us. Anyone we know? I don't think so. One fellow by the name of Gray. I'm expecting him in a minute. He's driving here. Sandra, you're going altogether too fast. Yes, Mother. Good morning, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to run into you. Really? Well, uh, not exactly. Well, maybe it was my fault. I wasn't looking where I was going. Say, that's funny. I wasn't either. Well, this is a coincidence as well as a collision. It certainly is, although I hadn't thought of it until you mentioned it. Sandria, this is ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is my mother, Mr. Uh, uh, my name's Alan Gray. Mr. Gray, my mother. How do you do? Hey! Hurry up and meet the old lady. I want to get out of here. What do you think this is, a park? Don't you think we'd better go? All right, Mother. I'm awfully glad to have met you, Mr. Oh, the Gray. pleasure was all mine. Can you make it? I'll try. <laughs> Unstrung, Sandra. I know, Stay dear. Back. You'll be all right, though, Mother. You're about to see your favorite child. Oh, it's not that I don't approve of you. I but... know, dear. But you wish I were more like Douglas. Well, I. Here he is, the kid himself. Hello, Mother. Hello, son. Hi, sis. Hello, Doug. You have an accident? No, thanks. Just had one. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd like to borrow your car while you have this one fixed. You don't mind, do you? Well, anything to get along with you, Mother. You can pick up my car at the garage. Thanks, Doug. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Who hit you? Well, he was an awfully nice fellow, really. He was six feet tall and had brown hair. Yes, yes, I know, I know. The main thing is, did you happen to notice his license number? No, but 
I did notice he had the nicest blue eyes. Mm-hmm, that's gonna be a lot of help. Any chance of your coming home to dinner? No, I'm afraid not, Mother dear. I'd better eat here. That's what you get for running a nightclub. No, oh, the food isn't bad. You ought to try it sometime. I prefer home cooking. <laughs> well, so long, Doug. Bye-bye, dear. Take good care of Mother, Sandra. Goodbye, dear. Bye-bye. You know, you're a pretty clever fellow, all right. What do you mean? Well, if your mother and sister ever knew... That's my business. Are the boys in there? Yeah. Oh, Doug. Yes? Say, I'm sorry about that crack I made out front of That's all right, that's all right, that's all right. That's all right. When it comes to business, I allow nobody to interfere. You know that. Yeah. But when it comes to my family, that goes double. You get that? Sure. Fine. Now go to the garage, check, and see that everything's ready. All right, Doug. Hogan, see Randall and his mob. Find out how many guns they can use. He's got a lot of business across the border. I'll check with him, Mr. Worthington. Donahue, when can we deliver to Randall? As soon as you give the word. Red has the truck ready. Lefty will give me a hand. You want us to deliver the stuff to Bazzoni? Not until we get the money. Graham, you know that. Okay, I got the money from McNally. Well, where is it? You know, Steve, we've got enough stuff on hand to last us a long time. Now, if it was a law passed so a prisoner couldn't shoot his way out of jail with a wooden gun... Speaking of the law, the federal men are getting kind of snoopy since somebody raided the government warehouses. Chief Ratcliffe? Yes. Alan Gray reporting, sir. Well, Gray, you're just in time to go to work. This is Henry Davis. Pete Crenshaw. Glad to you, Davis. You too, Crenshaw. And do you. Say, aren't you the fellow captured those smugglers last month? Yes, but I was pretty lucky. Well, you're on a tougher job this time. Hello, fellas. How are you, Hank? Well, Alan! <laughs> hey, I'm tickled to death to see you. Well, if it isn't old Hoppy himself, <laughs> huh? Oh, you know him. Know him? Why, listen, Chief. When I was a senior at college, he was a freshman. We roomed together. That's probably my tie he's got on right now. <laughs> Why, you never owned a tie. <laughs> Say, tell me, what are you doing down here on a visit? No, headquarters sent me. Uh-huh. What happened at the hospital, Hopkins? Nothing much, Chief. The guy died. Couldn't get a thing out of him except one word. Kept repeating it over and over again. What was that? Worthington. 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 Chateau Madrid. A man by the name of Worthington owns the Chateau Madrid. Yes, I know. And from what I hear, he's a pretty high-class fellow. Crenshaw, you and Hopkins run over to the Shadow of Madrid and have a talk with this Mr. Worthington. Pardon me, Chief. May I make a suggestion? Certainly, Crenshaw. If Worthington's mixed up in this, he's pretty clever to have kept his identity a secret. We'd gain nothing by seeing him, but we'd only put him on his guard. I guess you're right. We'd have better luck with an undercover man. But how are we going to plant a man near Worthington? His latest hobby is managing prize fighters, isn't it? So what? Now, if we could get a fighter that was good enough to attract Worthington's attention, he might go for it. I think that's a swell idea, Crenshaw. It sure is. But where are we going to get a good enough fighter? Gentlemen, let me present our college champion. And he's pretty good, too. <laughs> well, I can't compete with professionals. <laughs> oh, it's too bad about you. Listen, he's not very clever, but oh, Papa, what a sock. <laughs> My press agent. <laughs> <laughs> Gray, it looks to me like you're the man for the job. Crenshaw's right. If we're going to find out anything about this Worthington, it will have to come from someone who is on the inside. Crenshaw, you can act as Gray's manager. 
That's okay for Gray. He's new around here, but they might recognize me. Not a chance in the world if you take off that hose and remove that toupee. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't do that. Oh, the kid's cold and nothing to laugh at. What do you mean? Well, Gray, it's up to you to fight your way into Worthington's confidence. this guy away, and Worthington will get you the champion. He's a cinch. I'll knock that punk right in the boss's lap. He's a good boy, Sandra. He's going to be champion. Now's our chance, kid. Worthington's in the audience somewhere. I saw him come in. If you fail now, all of our work is wasted. I'll do my best. What's he doing in here? Who? Blue eyes. What are you talking about, blue eyes? Well, that nice, that good-looking fellow who wrecked my car up there. You mean knockout Gray? That's right. He did say his name was Gray. Well. Don't forget, this brother's plenty tough. Thanks for the encouragement. Oh, I didn't mean it that way, you know. Brennan's too tough for him. Just wait and see. Before three rounds are over, Gray will kiss the canvas. Lucky canvas. Introducing at 176 pounds, Bastling Brennan. <laughs> I'm afraid you're blue eyes. We're black and blue before this fight's over. I was just going to say the same thing about your fighter. Gray surprised me. I thought you put him away in the first round. Don't worry, I'll put him to sleep. When? In the next round.
you didn't knock him out. I thought you were going to put him to sleep. Well, say them. I'll get him the next round. <laughs> well, this is the last round. I thought you said the fight was to go ten rounds. Mm -mm, not with Brennan in there. I still like Gray. See him better now? Your guess is as good as mine. Stay away and take it easy in this round. Put it over. What? Knockout Gray, I've sold my interest in you to Worthington. Swell, now we're beginning to get someplace. You bet. It's your job to hang around him as much as possible and get all the information you can. We don't want to be too obvious. He might get suspicious. Well, that's right, too. Well, you handle it in the way you see fit, huh? Say he's out in the car and he wants to meet you now. I don't think I ought to go out there. I tell you, Pete, suppose you bring him in here, huh? That's a good thought, too. Mr. Worthington. Mr. Worthington, this is Knockout Gray. Hi, Mr. Worthington. Well, I could feel better. Battling Brennan happens to be one of my boys. Oh, I'm sorry. That's too bad. Now, don't worry about it, Gray. I've got a better man than you. By the way, that was a nice scrap you put up. Well, I did my best. <laughs> Brennan will vouch for that. I hope you don't mind the change in manager. Not at all, Mr. Worthington. Of course, I appreciate everything my friend here has done for me. But under your management, I think I'll make real headway. And after I've given you the best years of my life. Stop bragging. I'm going to give you every chance to get to the top. Oh, darling, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Knockout, I want you to meet the sweetest girl in all the world. My sister. Sister? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Glad to know you. How do you oh. do? And incidentally, you owe me for the cost of a fender. Who oh, say I've got that in the garage downtown? It's all fixed. Knockout, I want you to meet my sister. That's what Worthington said to him. You should have seen the expression on Gray's face. <laughs> well, anyway, I don't have to go around exposed anymore. Yeah. Now I'm undercover again. <laughs> Say, do you think Gray and that Worthington girl are sweethearts or something? Well, I asked him, but he said that's the second time he'd ever seen her. Well, if there's anything between them, Gray sure is in a tough spot. Yes. Morning, Gray. How are you, Nara? 
Say, Crenshaw, what kind of hair tonic do you use? Ah, just a minute. It's my own discovery. It works, too. Say, how is everything? Oh, about the same as it was last night. You know, I don't understand, Wellington. Seems to be a nice fellow. Comes from a good family. See, I don't want to mix into your private affairs. But if you'd rather not work on this Worthington case, well, maybe... What are you driving at? What? Hello? Yes, Chief. Dave is talking. What's that? Hopkins killed? Shot in the back. By whom? The rats. Okay. Yes, Chief. Goodbye. Well, can you beat that? They got Hopkins in the alley back of the Chateau Madrid. Made a clean job of it. No evidence. Where are you going, Alan? I'm going to drop in to see Mr. Worthington tonight. Good evening, Mr. Worthington. Oh, glad you dropped in on me, Gray. How do you like my place? Very nice. Hey, I hope you didn't mind my dropping in on you like this. Not at all, not at all. Come on in and get your feet wet. No, thanks. I don't drink. Well, I'll, I'll buy a pair of galoshes. <laughs> You know, most people are deceiving, Gray. One really never knows what a man is just by looking at him. Now take you, for instance. I would never really have suspected that you were a prize fighter. Well, I guess very few of us run true to type. Pardon me. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Waterloo, but Mr. Armstrong would like to see you. All right. Will you pardon me? Sure. Oh, my sister is sitting over there. Why don't you go over and say hello? Thanks. Oh, and tell him I'll join him in a few moments. OK. Wellington. Mostly glad to see you again. Oh, thank you. You remember my mother? Why, certainly. How are you, Miss Wellington? How do you do? I'm quite well, thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'll be glad to. Have you seen my brother? Why, yes. A waiter just called him. Said a Mr. Armstrong wanted to see him. But he'll be here in a few minutes. Oh, Douglas is always so busy. Going from morning until night. <laughs> and from night until morning. Say, <laughs> <laughs> this autumn was only certainly a big one. What you trying to do, start another world war? Not only that, now we start to run guns across the border. <laughs> so you know things like that are discouraging. That's just to scare little children. If you haven't got guts enough to go on, quit. I don't want to quit. Well, then shut up. Now that that's all settled, say, how about that Mazzoni order? Well, we'll deliver him his groceries tomorrow. If you fellas will excuse me, I'll see you later. How long have you been boxing? Oh, come on, let's skip that. Well, prize fighting must be a thrilling business. No, no don't tell me that you're taking up boxing. <laughs> well, you're not very on your son, Don't worry, <laughs> darling. I won't step out of my class. Here, <laughs> it's getting late. Come along, Sandra. Oh, must you go? Oh, yes, you really should. Thanks, Doug. But there is such a thing as a gentleman taking two ladies home. Yes, Gray, that's a good idea. I'll be glad to. There, we've two votes. How about it? Are you for or against? Oh, <laughs> a thought of a referee, eh? Precisely. <laughs> well, you win. <laughs> All right. My watch must have stopped. I had no idea it was this late. Must you go? Well, I think I should. Oh, I've certainly enjoyed talking to you, but I'm afraid I've monopolized the conversation. Oh, I enjoyed every minute of it. Really, I did. Well, that's very sweet of you, but if I'd been clever, I would have taken advantage of this opportunity to find out all about you. Your life and experiences and, well, anything I could. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're not clever. I don't think you'd approve of me at all. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're a bold, bad bandit who goes around kicking old men and shooting little children with mothers in their arms. <laughs> I'm hardly as bad as all that. Sandra, 
regardless of what happened, I want you to remember one thing. I think you're the nicest girl I've ever met. What do you mean, regardless of what happened? Oh, one never knows. So many things can happen. For instance? Well, your brother and I might disagree. Oh, Douglas seems to be very fond of you. Well, I'd better be on my way. You ought to be in bed. Oh, don't worry about me. I never go to bed until Douglas comes home. He should be here any minute now. Maybe I'll bump into him. Oh, how thoughtless of me. It didn't occur to me how you were to get back to town when I drove you out here. You'd better take my car. Oh, no, thanks. The walk will do me good. Well, I'm glad you think I'm the nicest girl you've ever met. You are. And please remember that. Good night. Good night, Sandra. Mr. Worthington! Mr. Worthington! All right. Yes, what happened? Why, I just left the house when I noticed someone in the bushes. You got out of your car and he took a shot at you. So I returned the fire and almost got him. Well, I'm certainly glad you were handy. Thanks a lot. Did you get a chance to see what he looked like? No, I didn't. Oh, well, probably a hold-up man. You know, somebody took a shot at me last month, too. Yes, yes, thanks to Alan. I just got out of the car and was walking toward the house when somebody started using me for a target. Oh, you should notify the police. But it's all over. The police can't do any good now. Say, what's the idea of you carrying a gun? Well, I hope it won't make any difference to you, Mr. Wellington. And you too, Sandra. You see, I was mixed up... Well, I was mixed up in a little racket. A couple of boys didn't like me very much. I'm surprised to hear this, Gray. I didn't want you to find out about me, Oh, I'm glad we did. Alan, you're going to make me a promise. <laughs> Don't tell me you're going to reform him. Well, that's a natural instinct, isn't it? You see, I like... I mean, I think you're a very nice person. Thank you. And from now on, young man, you're going straight. I'll do anything I can to help you, and I'm sure Douglas will, too. Won't you, Doug? Hmm? Oh, certainly. Well, it looks as if you're going to be another thing for the Worthington family to worry about. You better go home and get a good night's sleep. Maybe tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. In the gymnasium? No, in my office. Good night, Sandra. Good night, Alan. Good night, Mr. Wellington. Good night. That shooting was a clever idea, Gray. When I told him I'd been in a racket before, it seemed to make quite an impression. Well, if he's in a racket, he'll make you a proposition. You can bet on that. If he isn't? You'll know all about that pretty soon. There's no question in my mind but that Worthington will confide in you. Maybe not much at first, but eventually. Well, I'd better shove off. I'm to meet him at 10 o'clock. Okay. And good luck. If there's anything you want to see me about, I'll be here tomorrow at this time. All right, Chief. Get that address I gave you. Take me to Chateau Madrid. Yes, sir.
I'll throw you in jail for speeding like this. Sorry, sir. But officer, we're in a hurry. That's just too bad. All right, the stuff will be delivered in the morning. Come in. Well, well. Good morning, Gray. Good morning, Mr. Weber. Hi. Fine. Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Hogan. Boys, knock out Gray. How you do? Hi. You know, I've been thinking a lot about you since I talked to you last night. Well, I hope you're not going to hold it against me, my being mixed up in a little, uh... In a little racket? Yeah. Ah, don't let that bother you. Most everyone's mixed up in a racket of some kind. I hope your sister isn't serious about reforming me. No, don't let it worry you either. Well, it does a little, because if I had a chance to pick up some easy money, I'd... Well, if you can keep your mouth shut, I can show you just how to pick up that kind of money. What are you going to use them for, Doug? He can help Red and Lefty on the truck. Are you sure you're right? Yes. I've got a little errand for you. Lefty, Red, meet Alan Gray. Oh, I saw him fight the other night. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right. Did he get here yet? Who? That fighter at Worthington. Knock out Gray. Yeah, he's outside. The boss is sending with Red and Lefty to pick up some stuff at the warehouse. Want to go to the warehouse, pick up some boxes and crates, take them to Bazzoni. Wait a minute, I'll give you the address. You've got to stop him. He's an undercover man. Don't be silly. I'm right, I tell you. I saw him and Chief Ratcliffe together. I'm going out and tell him. Are you crazy? If you go out there, he might get wise. I'll handle this myself. Oh, Doug. Can I see you a moment? Wait a minute, boys. What's on your mind, Jim? That Grace from the Department of Justice. What's that? Yeah, he's been planted here. How do you know? Why, Graham saw him at Radcliffe. Yeah? Well, I'll take care of him. Red, you and Lefty stay here. Gray has to take the truck alone. Oh, but Mr. Worthington, this Do as I say. Drive to Hope and Olive Street. The men will meet you there. Hope and Olive. Hey, wait a minute. Have you got your gun with you in case you stop by... Hold up, men. Sure. You want me to come back here when I'm finished? Yes. When you're finished. Hey, why didn't you bump them off? What, and have the whole Department of Justice down on us? Don't be silly. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Plenty. Boss, I saw Gray and Ratcliffe together. Yes, yes, I know. Get me the Department of Justice. Hello, Department of Justice. They just left here in a Royal Grocery Company truck. They'll be at Olive and Hope Streets in 15 minutes. Don't take any chances. They're loaded with firearms. Shoot and ask questions later. Operator, check that call. What's up, Chief? I don't know exactly. Somebody's going to be at Olive and Hope Street in 15 minutes. Say, they'll check that call and see if it came from here. Yeah? That's exactly what I want them to do. They'll think gray phone. Catch on? Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. Thanks. That call came from the shop in Madrid. Must be from Gray. There's no question about it. Get a couple of cars and stop that truck. It's marked Royal Grocery Company. And get those racketeers before they get you. All right, Chief. Good luck.
Where's the truck? Why, you've been framed, Gray. Framed, huh? Yes. We had a telephone call from Worthington's place. Said the truck would be at Hill and Hope Street. And for us to shoot and ask no questions. Listen, boys. The chief's hunch was right. Worthington is in a racket. You think he's the one that's been robbing the government warehouse? I don't know about that. I was on my way to pick up something when he must have found out I was a federal man. Ah, that's tough. Well, I guess we've had a lot of trouble for nothing. I'm going back to the Chateau Madrid. You can't do that. Worthington will kill you. Not if I can convince him I was on his side. Ah, uh, you couldn't sell him that idea. I couldn't? No. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? I'm going to frame the newspapers. In one hour, you'll see headlines. Two federal men murdered. Well? What's the answer? There must be some mistake why I yes, saw... Yes, 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 I know, I know. Red, you and Lefty show Graham the country. You ain't gonna take me for a ride, are you? Just a little one, the air will do you good. It'll clear your brain. You can't rub me out, Waiting, then you can't. Well, most mistakes can be rubbed out. Get him out of here. You can't rub me out, Wayne, you can't do it to me! Let me The first thing you know, I'm going to have an innocent man bumped off. Yeah. You know, it beats me how that gray got away. Yeah, he should be here by now. It beats me how quickly these things get out. Here he comes now. You ought to see the truck. They let him have it with both bells. Are you being followed? No, I made sure of that. I dissed them all right. I'd been here sooner, but I had to hide out in an alley until the coast was clear. Go outside and make sure he wasn't trailed. Right. I'm sorry you had to kill those federal men. Well, I had no choice in the matter. It was me or... Say, how did you know about it? Here it is. It was a nervy job. You certainly used your head. Well, you told me what to do in case I was stopped by hold-up men. That's Sandra. Tell her I'll be with her in a few minutes. Both of us? Yes. I want to have a few words with Gray. Sit down, Gray. Well, I guess it isn't any secret to you now. I'm in a racket. I'm not a bit curious, Mr. Wellington. That's one thing I like about you, Gray. The other is you have plenty of courage. You can be invaluable to me and you won't be wasting your time. Now that I can trust you, I'm going to make a confession. I have a large quantity of firearms which I sell to the principal gangs in this country. Whew, that is a confession. <laughs> hello, Sandra. Oh, hello. Uh, Doug will be out in just a moment. Thank you. You're looking very, very pretty today. Thank you. You know, I've been uh, very busy lately, but uh, not too busy to think about you. Oh, let's not go into that, Jim. You know how I feel about you. Did you ever hear of a man named Bazzoni? You mean the counterfeiter? Yes. Well, this morning you were on your way to deliver some stuff to him when my plans were changed. However, tomorrow will do just as well. Oh, Sandra's outside. You want to come along and say hello? I don't think so. I guess I better get everything ready for tomorrow. Good boy. See you in the morning? Right. Jim? If I thought you were really in love with me, I wouldn't hurt you for the world, but to you, I'm just another girl, so... If you have any place to go, don't let me keep you. I'm a pretty hard guy to discourage. So I noticed. Hi, sis. I 
hello, Doug. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, it's quite all right. Jim kept me amused. Douglas, I want to make a date with you. For when? Tomorrow evening. I'm buying a new car, and I'd like your opinion. I'm afraid I couldn't tomorrow evening. Well, how about Alan? Do you think he could go with me? Now, why didn't you say you wanted Alan in the first place? Would have saved so much time. Now, that's the way the wind blows. Wind? It's a cyclone. <laughs> I guess you'd better get in your storm cellar, Jim. Hello? Chief? Gray speaking. Yep. Worthington's the man we want. Tomorrow, we'll not only find out where he stores his firearms, but we'll be able to get a line on Bozzoni and his gang. That's great. Now, listen, Chief. Have Crenshaw and Davis meet me at the garage behind the Chateau Madrid at 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. And tell them to bring that small radio sending set with them. I want to install it on a truck. Okay, Chief. Thanks. Here it is. Looks pretty good. You think it'll work? Sure, it'll work. We have a receiving set already set up in the office. Why do you want to split it? Better put it under the driver's seat. Will you be alone in the truck? No, but I think I'll be able to talk to you without my boyfriend's getting wise. When I find out where they're going, I'll let you know. Then you can meet me there. Gray, if you put this over... Well, it's worth a try. Say, is that siren on your car detachable? Why, yes, I think so. Why? Well, you fellows are installing the transmitter. I'm going to take that siren and put it on my truck. I might need it. Come on. You send for me? Are you ready? All set. Well, come on, let's go. No, no, you boys stay here. How do you like that? Just a couple of pals. Yeah, it's a wonder Gray doesn't call them toots. How did you get along with his sister? Eh, uh, not so good. But I'm gonna do better. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm gonna see Sandra. I'm gonna take care of my friend, Mr. Gray. Good luck. You drive the truck, Gray. All right, boss. Well, looks like we're headed for the warehouse. Follow me. Okay, Mr. Worthington, we'll follow you. Jim, I don't believe a word of saying. I'm telling you, he's in a racket. But he gave me his word. You just haven't got the courage to face the truth. Jim. Where did you say I'd find him? He's at the Gordon Warehouse on Ellum Street, and he'll be there in 15 minutes. We'd better hurry. Wait. I'll go alone. What place is this? The old Gordon Warehouse. Oh, the old Gordon Warehouse, huh? This is Elm Street, isn't it? Yeah, Valley Boulevard. That's all we want to know. Come on. Wait a minute. We'll get Bazzoni's gang, too. Red and Lefty will tell you where the groceries are. There's several men inside who will give you a hand. Back the truck round. All right, boss.
Maybe it isn't working. Keep your shirt on. Chances are they're loading the truck. Zoni's address. He'll be waiting for you. The boys have got a few more boxes to load and then you can get on the way. Well, good luck, Gray. Good luck to you, too. Well, that's a good load. All right, hop in. Okay. Well, she's all loaded. Okay, pile in. Let's go. Wait a minute, Red. My confidence in you didn't mean any more than this. Oh, I'm sorry, but you... Why don't you tell her the truth? I know the truth. You're all racketeers, and that truck is full of firearms. Oh, listen, Sandra, I can explain everything. Well, then why but... don't you? Oh, we're, we're, tell her we're working for her. That's enough out of you. Sandra. I thought that was your car. What are you doing here? Well, I... I had a hunch Gray wasn't on the level and saw them. What are you doing here? I found out he doesn't want to go straight. Why, Sandra, Sandra, you're crying. I know. Oh, Douglas, I'm in love with him. Don't be a fool, Sandra. You know when once a fellow gets into a racket like that, he'll never get out of it. We can't reform him. I know, you're right. Listen, you better go home and pull yourself together, eh? I guess he's on his way. I wonder what I did with Bozzoni's address. Worthington gave it to me on a slip of paper. I can't keep it find it. Maybe you put it in your inside pocket. Hold the wheel, Rat. Have a look. Hey! What's that up there? It's a microphone. Wonder who planted it. Well, I don't care who planted it. I'm ripping it out. Against that thing, Rob. Keep your hands down. I can't see. How can I see? You want to crash this up? Well, you can't see, huh? Maybe Graham was right about this after all. Oh. Ah, ah. Step outside. Come on. Say, there are no cops. It was a trick. That's phone Worthington. I'll be able to give you Bozzoni's address now. Just a minute. Ready? 1756 Camrose Avenue. 1756 Camrose Avenue. 
1756, Camrose Avenue. That gray is some boy. Get there as soon as you can. I had to get rid of two of the men on the truck, and the chances are they'll get in touch with Wellington. Take the boys and rush over to Brazoni's. Have some of the men cover the Chateau of Madrid. Yes, sir. Come on, David. Hello, Mr. Worthington. Great pulled the gun on us and forced us off the truck. He's a copper, all right. Where are you? Well, stay there. I'll have Armstrong pick you up. So Great turned out to be a federal man after all, huh? I'll do the talking around here. Pick up Red and Lefty on the Mission Road and go to Bazzoni's. Well, what are you guys waiting around for? Get going. You want me to take off after Gray? No, I'll take care of Gray myself. You go with the boys. Oh, you Mr. Bozzoni? Yes. Have your men take the stuff inside right away. Well, Worthington had another job for the boys. Oh, he did, eh? Yeah, I figured he might use some of your men. Okay. Hey, fellas! Come on, hurry up. Take the stuff inside. Come on. Please, hurry up. Come on, fellas, hurry up. Step on it. Got any more? Never get anywhere like this. Where are those gas bombs? In the car. Hey, be careful, Gray. Thank you. 
right, get on that side, Davis. Everybody get set. Come on, Mazzoni, drop those guns and come on out. <laughs> Right, Bazzoni, you're all fooled. Stand come on, come on, come on, you fellas, step out of here. <laughs> all right, boys, take them out of here and put them in the car. Come on, Bazzoni. <laughs> Is he? He's gone. I'm sorry. Terribly sorry. He told me all about you. It's too bad he was on the wrong side of the fence. If there's anything I can do, Sandra. I'm afraid there's a lot you'll have to do for me, Alan. Remember? Douglas bought you for me. 